Aloha anime aficionados, because if you're still reading Cradle at this point, you may as well be watching anime. And as Gigak once said, Tournament Arc is coming up in the uncrowned book, the upcoming Will Write book in his Cradle series. And I'm here specifically to talk about the Uncrowned King tournament format. Uh, and as you can see, I am as excited as I yelled there because I even did up a fancy graphic and paint here to help collect your thoughts and kind of uh, just illustrate uh, what I think is going to be happening. Um, you know, give a rough idea of um, where the tournament's going to go, how it's all going to pan out. Uh, before I get into what I think, I'm just going to go over some facts about what we know. And uh, we're going to start with the Uncrowned King Tournament being a uh, regular, if not spread apart, tournament uh, amongst the eight major factions of Cradle, uh, where they pit their most promising underlords against each other uh, in pretty much a proxy war, uh, basically political grandstanding to say who's best, who's the, who's got the biggest cojones. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, so what we know is, of course, there's going to be eight factions. And those factions are, as we can see here, the Acura clan, led by Acura Mels. The Aurelius clan, led by I don't know. Uh, oof, that's a... Oof. Ethan's got a lot on his, shoulder, sh a lot on his shoulders there. Uh, the dragons. I don't know if it's just the gold dragons or if it's just dragons in general. And that's a uh, faction led by uh, Sushit Kunaz. Uh, the Eight Man Empire, led by Eight Besties. Uh, we don't know any of the particulars yet about those eight people. Uh, they basically, powers combined, make up the strength of the monarch. Uh, the Nine Cloud Court, led by the illustrious, or is it Lu the luminous, uh, Shah Miara. Uh, like a nine-year-old or something who's basically inherited her place and her power. Uh, Rigan Shen, who's basically just this shit poster uh <laughs> this uh just shit disturber who is now leading the dread god cults um we'll go into that a little bit later uh nor strider um everyone's somewhat familiar with him uh, and i say and as many subjects we'll go into that in a bit and emmer silentborn bottom text because i don't know who he's leading uh one would assume emmer silentborn who is a remnant is leading a bunch of other remnants so maybe he's the remnant whisperer and let's go up the list from there uh nor strider he's kind of the odd man out uh, why would we be here as kind of this lone wanderer, this loner kind of guy? Uh, well, as we saw in the Ghost uh, Water book, um, the Ghost Water facility had a bunch of employees. So it had a bunch of people manning and operating the facility, uh, keeping things clean, running experiments, I would guess, doing scientific research, etc. Uh, and you could only assume that that was one of many facilities uh, North Strider would have across Cradle, whether it's the main kind of celestial body or some of the smaller ones because as we know there are multiple stellar or planetary body bodies that make up cradle uh, of course there's Regan Shen he's got his own faction in a sense now uh, he's leading the dread god cults now we don't know if anyone else knows this uh, we would assume just by uh, from what we've read in the books uh, that the monarchs can see quite a bit um, they've got uh, quite a lot of power over reality itself at least within cradle uh, and one can only assume that they can see that uh, Regan Shen is disturbing shit yet again by kind of, I guess, commandeering the Dread God cults. Uh, the Nine Clad Courts, uh, we could just assume that's another, you know, a faction of, you know, territories or peoples. Uh, the Eight Man Empire is, of course, an empire. And, of course, you know, Aurelius Clan, Kira Clan, the Dragons, they're all their own larger faction. They control territory and, you know, a bunch of smaller factions or peoples. So the tournament itself, uh, we can see that in the past, now uh, we're just gonna jump to the second points here. In the past, uh, from Yaren herself, she detailed that it was three rounds uh, for the teams, you know, team-centric rounds before we got to the eight-person one-on-one final bracket. Uh, what we do know uh, for this particular tournament, the one upcoming, is that there's eight factions, of course, we just detailed that, four teams per faction, which uh, are made up of three sacred artists in each team for a total of 32 teams and 96 competitors. And if we jump to the bottom here, uh, we know that it's uh, a not um, to death for at least, at the very least, the, uh, the eight person one-on-one -on -one brackets, uh, or I would guess the pure combat rounds. So in those um, team rounds, I'd assume they don't want people killing other people. 
Um, I'm guessing there's maybe some room for accidental deaths. Like, I mean, if someone dies in the one-on-ones, you can't necessarily hold it against the winning competitor if someone dies. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens there. I would also guess that you're probably not supposed to horribly maim people or um, permanently harm their quorum or their being. So, you know, because I mean, if you send out like a promising child into the brackets, um, say uh, mercy, mercy being sent out by Malice, um, Malice probably doesn't want her child being just basically rendered useless for eternity. Um, so yeah, probably going to be something against that, but we'll see. Um, this is a pretty uh, dog eat dog world, and uh, you know it's kind of the toughest survive. It's always you know it's a show of might basically. Um, might makes right and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, so that said, that's what we know. And uh, I've seen a lot of theories about people kind of um, with more elimination centric uh, theories um, or I guess models for this tournament. And I don't think it's necessarily going to be like that. Um, I don't think it's going to be a very cut and dry tournament. Um, I don't think it's going to be super focused like a lot of people seem to be thinking like a two or three day tournament. I think this is going to be a very grand tournament. It's going to be very uh, spread out maybe you know mul like um, more than just two or three days multiple days maybe even weeks uh because this you know this happens only now and then and because it's you know it's supposed to be political grandstanding it's gonna be a very grand thing when we bring everyone across this gigantic place called cradle together so yeah it makes sense that'd be fairly large and drawn out uh that said um i think it's going to be a little bit more points based or maybe something even close to elo in terms of um, how teams rank and who kind of goes on to next rounds. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, I also don't think uh, you can have um, one faction filling out all eight spots here. Um, I think everyone's kind of concluded that already, of course. Um, that'd be kind of ridiculous, but I don't think each faction is going to be able to have at least one representative in the one-on-one -on -one eight man bracket either. Uh, so yeah, uh, going back to the might makes right thing, uh, I don't think there's going to be any kind of just, you know, seeding of, you know, oh, at least one contestant uh, per faction in the final bracket. No, um, it's not going to be coddling. It's not going to be, um, there's not, not going to be any kind of, uh, what's the term? Just, uh, I, we'll just stick with coddling, right? Um, you have to prove that your faction's worth getting to the eight-man brackets. Um, but you can still dominate the bracket. I think we're going to see up to four competitors from one faction able to get into the brackets uh, and yeah so let's just go into what I think um, so it's gonna be points based as I said not pints Ooh, that'd be good though points based early rounds to determine Urgh, I can't spell right now um, one on one competitors and not elimination centric i'll get into that in a second here what i mean by that is uh lowest scoring teams knocked out so for the lower rounds the team based rounds what i think is going to happen is say for instance in round one so we start out with 32 teams 96 combatants um specifically the teams are the important part here um, I think each round is going to be very drawn out. There's going to be a lot of room for each team to accumulate points uh, before they get knocked out. Uh, whether or not they even get knocked out in the first round or maybe the second round, um, they're going to have like maybe a full day, the first, uh, the first day at least, right? We're going to see all the teams having multiple chances to gain points and prove themselves before they get knocked out. Uh, I think we will see after the first round, whether it's you know, just one day or two, or, you know... Um, whether they get knocked out in the second round. Um, I think it's just basically gonna be, they don't accumulate enough points, therefore the bottom teams get knocked out. Um, specifically something like maybe um, after the first round, uh, hypothetical. First round, bottom eight teams knocked out. Or I guess eliminated. 
So, uh, what I'm getting at with that, uh, we already said that, is say after that, so 24 people would go into the next round. Um, of course, in the second round, we would see more of the same. Um, I think we're going to see like a not, not a lot of you know combat combat focused linear kind of very one dimensional rounds um, going from third and second round uh, for third and second round specifically. In the second round, we'll see like twenty four maybe teams in the second round doing more kind of weird, um, varied um, contests, I guess. Varied contests of ability shows of. Um, Shows of, I guess, flexibility or all-aroundedness. Oof, I just can't think of any good words right now. But it's not just going to be like elimination. I'll beat these other people up and they lose or they don't get points. Um, we're going to see a lot of, maybe not quite as silly as maybe um, in like My Hero Academia. Where, you know, they play horse or chicken fight or whatever it's called. Where, you know, two people on their team. Two people on a team will host the third person on their shoulders and the third person has to post like nothing like silly like that um, but they'll have to show that you know they're very well-rounded beings they're more than just you know the punch the strength um uh that they have a lot of different techniques that aren't just you know might or combat focused um and that's where we can see kind of a lot of uh, creativity and um fun i guess funness um when we watch this tournament because it's all about us having fun but it's all about showing as well that you know um the the factions have more than just might right and uh, of course they've got more to their backwater territories than um you know just a bunch of, you know, th 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 these aren't just people we just rule right um we got people who can come out show their um ability and um yeah you know it's it's a territory worth governing so we're gonna have a lot of different uh, ways that they're gonna be able to um demonstrate their ability uh, now for round three, this is where we might get a little bit more one-dimensional. So let me just get this down first real quick. So get rid of the hypothetical here. First round, bottom eight teams out. Second round, more of the same. And then varied um contests ability uh, let's just put this back and various contests ability means um where's it going with this very contest ability just combat shows um i guess So in the third round, we will see. This is where I think we might get a little bit more elimination focus, as I said. So if we eliminate um, eight teams, maybe in the first round, and then eight teams again in the second round, in the third round, we'll of course have 16 teams, maybe. And this is where we might be able to do some sort of just, you know, team versus team. This is going to be specifically combat focused. Um, so we can do team versus team. Four points. And um, at the end of that, so that's just straight up. That's very um, uh, one dimensional there. Um, they might just do, you know, like Pokemon as someone in the forum mentioned. Uh, it could just be like, you know, for each combatant in each team, like, uh, you know, three versus three. First person goes first, they beat someone, they stay on, the next person goes up until they beat them. If So it could be like just one person full eliminating the one team. Um, or they might just do, you know, uh, three and three at a, three on three at a time, uh, just to see how they work, you know, synergetically. Um, that's probably a little bit more likely, but that could also be some sort of round that takes place in the first two rounds. Um, sorry, some sort of contest that takes place in the first two rounds, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that comes down to, you know, at the end of the, all three rounds, we'll see who's ranked highest. Um, and that means that um, top ranking teams determine how many spots faction gets in 1v1. Seeding for 
contestants for four one v one contestants. So to get into this, so say uh, for argument's sake, um, four teams from the Acura clan all place, you know, the top four, they get the, um, the top four teams, they all get the most points. So that means, you know, that's um, four teams, the full four teams at the Acura clan fields, um, they get four spots, a 1v1. So that means that they'll have to choose four people to go into the uh, bracket. Now, they don't have to pick um, combatants from one specific team, they can pick three combatants from the exact same team if they want. So, um, for instance, if Lyndon, Mercy, and um, uh, Pride were all on the same team, they could all be in the brackets. Or if they were all on separate teams, they could all be in the bracket as well. And the same goes for if they only, so for instance, if the Acura Clan um, only had two teams who, top, uh, who placed in the top eight teams. So two teams that had enough points to be in the top eight, that means only two combatants get into the one versus one bracket. Um, but it doesn't even matter if they were, actually, no, we'll say that, um, yeah, sorry. They do have to be in the, um, they do have to be in one of the teams that was uh, in the top uh, eight teams in, uh, in terms of points. So if Mercy and Linden are on different teams, but they both both teams were in the top eight, they could still be in there, of course. Same as if they're on the same team, they could be in the top eight, but that would affect seeding. So uh, we're gonna get into how that works. So this uh, makes it kind of hard to game the system. Uh, so you um, you can't you can't just um, min max, I guess, or I guess I'm um, front load all your best players or your best combatants into one team. So, you know, putting Linden and Mercy and Pride, say, assuming they're all the best in the accurate line into one team, might not be the best idea because that means you, uh, you don't technically, you have a lesser chance of getting um, other teams to win, which means you have less combatants in the top, or sorry, in the 1v1 in the A man bracket. Uh, so, they, you have to make this strategic choice of how many strong people I want to put onto one team versus, um, you know, should I split them up? Uh, to get a better chance of getting more teams into the bracket or do I just want to guarantee this one team getting into the brackets? Because um, you know if you do that then you only have one person in the brackets one chance at winning like do you really believe your daughter Mercy? Um, is gonna make it that far uh, and we know that's very important because um, for instance there was a note uh, it, I think it was Underlord in Underlord that Mercy for sure she has to be in the bracket um, because this is very much you know political grandstanding this is very much posturing thing there's pride on the line so um, that also plays into um, you know having the black flame team for instance this, this comes into having a backwater territory uh, having its own team because you know the whole grandstanding thing if you have you know if you try to front load just the the main Akira bloodline the main Akira family into the bracket or into the tournament um even if you do win the tournament say with just mercy maybe just mercy gets in the bracket or maybe you get two contestants into the brackets um but they're just you know mercy and pride uh even if you win or even if you kind of you know technically if mercy and pride being the only two from the accurate clan are in the bracket are still the majority faction like say the other six spots are just you know one faction with one contestant each um, the other factions could be like, well, yeah, you have two people in the tournament, but I mean, what does that matter when you rule over such paltry territories, right? So it kind of matters, you know, if you can show some strength from your minor territories or the branch families or whatever else. Uh, same goes for the other contestants, you know, North Strider might want to show like, um, not only do I have, you know, good employees or whatever, but like I've got, um, good synthetic sacred artists because maybe he's got like a bunch of bio engineered uh, sacred artists or experiments or whatever um same goes for him silent born maybe he has got like remnants but also he represents um sacred beasts who knows right um north strider might represent sacred beasts i don't know for sure if um beast uh beast rider beast uh, king is under him or not you know lots of different reasons like that but yeah so that's the main thing uh that's the main 
I guess, kind of way they're going to get up there. Because it's not necessarily going to be the exact same format as the previous tournaments. Uh, it was implied that previous tournaments were a little, little bit more eliminations focused. But um, we don't have a guarantee on that. And we also, you know, we don't know if it's going to be the same because it's implied that maybe this might be a little bit bigger. But it's also sooner. Things are being changed up a bit because we're rushing it. Um, and getting into that, you know, getting into rushing it, uh, we're going to get into the bracket here. But before we specify, you know, where people are in the bracket, uh, I do kind of want to uh, elucidate that um, because we're rushed, we're not going to be able to follow the usual meta. I think what the usual meta is, is each faction will have a bunch of other underlords because they can prepare. They have lots more room to prepare. A bunch of underlords just on the verge of... Um, uh, leveling up to Overlord, break, uh, you know, transitioning to Overlord, um, or sorry, ascending, because why would you not? It said that that's in the rules. You can you can um, ascend to Overlord uh, in the tournament. I'm not sure it's at what point, but you know, you can just not do it until the specific point where you're allowed to. So that was probably the meta in the past. So we're going to see a lot uh, a lot more contestants who can't just do that, even upwards into the um, uh, into the one-on-one -on -one bracket you know there's going to be underlords who still haven't ascended yet uh, or sorry you know leveled up to overlord just because no one's been able to prepare that many we will see of course ethan do that i think i mentioned that in my previous video ethan's of course gonna he's been holding it in for a long time he's gonna do that and i think others will too but uh let's get into i think we'll do 14 is that small enough test yes so I think we're going to see three Acura clan teams, not four. We're not going to see all our main characters in the brackets. Um, and the reason for that is, I think... Hmm, does... Do I, I, I don't think... Garen's going to get in. I think there's going to be some weird thing with um, her. Either she's going to have some complication with her blood shadow because we're going to see lots of different uh, ways that can happen whether it's Yan Shimei interfering in some way um, Regan Shen interfering in some way or her just not being confident enough in her control of her blood shadow or maybe it's a pride thing basically not wanting to rely on or using her um, blood shadow um, so I don't know if she's going to make it into this um, but either way whether she makes it into the 1v1 or not um, I think we are going to see mercy in here uh, I don't think we're gonna have to suffer Acura Malice being embarrassed you know uh, despite the fact that you know um, it could be a whole twist thing where Will White's just like hey um, um, hey she's been built up as this huge like um, the savant is like um, amazing just super talented person oh she loses surprise surprise no I think we're gonna see her in here um, and I also think we're gonna see Linden, of course. And I think we're also going to see... Now, this is the hard one. Um, it's between this or it's between... Like this or um, Yaren. But I think we are going to see Ethan here. I do think so. Um, it's between Ethan or Yaren not being in. Uh, I think it's going to be Ethan. Because, um, you know, Yaren's going to get sick and then she'll come in later on in the... You know, after the bracket gets interrupted, I've specified that. I'll specify it again. But uh, after the bracket gets interrupted, she'll come in when things are going so... Um, and here we are going to see Sophranatov, I think is her name. Uh, the dragon, which is sworn vengeance on Linden. So we will see, of course, we can see all the round of eight, all the quarterfinals matches take place first. And then we're going to see them starting maybe here and going up. Uh, and the reason I say that is because, so we'll see maybe Ethan or Linden's first, then we'll see Mercy or Sof's um, second, uh, but we're gonna see Sofer and Atoth, um, oops, I think it's, sorry, I think it's gonna be here, this is why. We're gonna see uh, Sofer and Atoth stomp on Mercy. Um, Mercy, for whatever reason, something's gonna, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but um, Sofer and Atoth is gonna take advantage of Mercy in some way, or maybe um, just just because she can at some point um, using her winning stance, um, she's going to 
hurts Mercy more than she can or should. Um, just to kind of rub it in to Linda and be like, bitch, I'm coming for you. I know Mercy's your friend. I'm going to stomp you harder than I'm stomping her. And just to rile him up, just to you know, be like, I hate you. Um, now that's kind of, this is kind of hard to do because um, as I said earlier, you don't want to like permanently maim um, or, you know, you know, be too, be too bad to one of the um, like ma main family or main contestant members because that might, you know, really anger another, uh, another monarch. But um, I think you can do it well enough to, you know, just, um, I guess, terrorize or um, torture uh, in some way or just, you know, hurt that person being mercy um, without make without inciting intervention from um, their the larger monarch like in this case Acura malice um, so yeah that's gonna happen and so for Natoth oops it's gonna go up here antagonizing looming over Linden from the other side of the bracket that's like the big red herring I'm here I'm the big bad um, and she also might have you know beat up on Yiren or something uh, again, taking advantage of Yuren's, you know, lack of confidence in her control over uh, blood shatter, or just some other reason. Like maybe, it's, um, maybe we'll see Yan Shumai taking advantage. Uh, we're going to see her here as well. Um, I'm not sure if she's going to get to the semifinals, but we will see Yan Shumai here. Um, I think we will also maybe see. I don't know where, but we're also going to see. Actually, we could actually maybe see. Hold on. Yan Shumai down here somewhere. So maybe here. I think that'd be a good place. Let's see. And then over here we'll see Xyle. I think we can definitely see Xyle. Up here. So I think these are the six guaranteed people we're gonna see somewhere in the brackets. Specifically, I think we're gonna see Sulfur Natoth going to the semifinals. And I think we're gonna see Linden also going to the semifinals. And Ethan going to the semifinals. So that's how I think it's going to happen specifically. Um, Silver and Hoth is going to um, mess Mercy up, and might also maybe we'll see them mess uh, Yaren up in the in the rounds somewhere before she's knocked out or kind of has to disqualify because she's sick or something. I don't know. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we won't see whatever this semifinals match is. But we will see this taking place. We won't see it end. As I mentioned in my other video, we're going to see um, Party Crashed Tournament by the Dread Gods or some sort of Dread God power. Um, basically, Reagan Chen is going to incite something while he can go do something surreptitious or sneaky, underhanded um, in the background. Um, even if you know uh, the other monarchs know what he's up to with the uh, the Dread God cults, um, they're going to be so their hands are going to be so full that they can't um, you know follow him or maybe like he sneaks off anyway and they're like oh crap where is he oh I can't focus I can't find him with my super sights or whatever else my omniscience because I'm too ba busy battling the dread gods or some other stuff going on uh, but yeah that's what's going to happen we uh, see a large part of our bracket here uh, we know how they're going to get there we're going to see a lot of activity in the round uh, sorry in the earlier rounds. Uh, the team based rounds because we want to see a lot of teams have a lot of action in order to build up those points and this is how it's going to um going to play out uh the there's going to be three accurate teams with enough points to get three people in and those three people are going to be probably mercy linen and ethan for sure linen and ethan i think um if not them if i'm wrong here it's going to be mercy linden and yaren because ethan could be like haha oh uh, some, I, something's happened i gotta disqualify from rounds because he doesn't want to show his full power right yeah Thanks for watching. Please comment down here what you think might happen or more uh, discussionally, uh, for better discussion, uh, comment in the Reddit thread as well uh, because that's where I'm gonna be hosting it. That's where I do most of my talking. So yeah, thanks for watching guys.